Welcome to the recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. Today we've been working on the Western Friend website. We're updating the subscription form so that it's a little more hopefully user friendly. We haven't done any testing. Uh, I don't really, I'm not working to a wireframe or, or feedback. We're just kind of speculating. Uh, but previously the form provided a list of something like um, 12 or so magazine kind of permutations of magazine subscription options basically you have three magazine formats you got a number of costs of essentially is what it boiled down to and uh, the recurring thing was separate uh, so yeah I think it's like 12 I might have I'm not, I think I've captured everything here all the permute all the uh, options and it boils down to two categories so I think this um, this approach is a little better than a select menu in that with a select menu you have to read each item and think about how it differs from the other items and not just in terms of the cost but uh, what it means whereas this basically boils down to two questions do you want the um, magazine to be paper or PDF or both and do you have any special cost needs are you low income uh, do you want to support uh, the organization by uh, for example giving a little extra or if you're an international subscriber and what these do when you toggle the button it essentially it modifies the cost uh, so it's that each option has a base cost low income people get more or less flat rate uh, we're not sure if we'll be leaving this print and PDF option um, Mary indicated first that we'll have these two options for low income people but I'll ask at our next code review session whether we can just leave this for consistency so we don't have things blinking or animating in and out of the user interface or some other confusing um, or complicated code to disable the feature that somebody might have already selected and making a subsequent selection having it toggle uh, their previous choice things like that uh, in any case true cost just multiplies it by two whatever the base cost is and international flat rate $55 which I qualify for be, or I'm on the international rate because I'm in Finland and later we'll be doing recurring subscriptions so the idea is to calculate the, this in the client so people know what they're paying they'll submit the form to the server with the dynamically calculated price and we'll set up a recurring subscription in Braintree. I've got working code on the server for most of that but we didn't get to that in this session. Perhaps tomorrow I'll have another live code session where we'll look more at the uh, passing the pricing structure from the server to the client and then getting the computed price back to the server or running the same calculation on the server and sending it to Braintree. Let's take a quick look at the code I formatted the templates just a little bit uh, so we've got on our subscribe page we have these basically three uh, sections all this below is essentially hasn't changed it's just the subscriber information and we're not really working with the recurring part yet so we'll focus here mo on the magazine format and costs we're using Vue.js to do the dynamic binding it's nice because it lets uh, me work just with the regular Django templates and HTML and most of it is rendered on the server and then I can just drop or sprinkle view into the into the HTML template or into the page view for the you know parts that are more dynamic so I don't have to wire up event listeners and things like that simplifies the code I just have declarative data bindings you know declarative passing of data into the, these template slots I don't have to resort to JSX or any of these other templating languages or add a build tool or any of that stuff so it's progressively enhanced and it's backwards compatible so I think it's really a good I hope Vue is able to maintain this level of simplicity while supporting some more advanced use cases that it's being uh, Vue 3 is being redesigned to solve so for our format we have three choices these are essentially just bootstrap cards each one taking up a column with a little bit of margin in between and when you click on a, one of these it's going to run a little JavaScript statement uh, that set that uh, changes a uh, state variable in the component to the corresponding um, format that you clicked on print, P, print and PDF or PDF um, this is a um, sorry, a bootstrap card. Bootstrap has classes that will style their cards. Here I'm using the border success style to make it green and I'm conditionally toggling that class, the border success. 
based on this JavaScript statement, which is just evaluating, it's just checking the same. And likewise, when you, uh, sorry, there's a little checkbox that also is toggled here. So if, if, if the magazine format matches, then that checkbox will display. It just gives a little bit more indication of what's being selected. And that's it, essentially. Uh, so when you click it, it sets the variable, and then these immediately evaluate to true. And there's a method that uh, computes, reactively computes the cost of each of these um, options. And I was able to, through pretty much luck, I was able to get, uh, just use the same method for all three of them. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you how that worked. Um, it's kind of a little bit magical, but in any case it worked. So all three of these are doing the same thing. And in fact, really it's the same pattern down here on these boxes, it's just a different state variable, it's a subscription cost, and it's just on click, it's setting it to the corresponding cost, and the border success is being, and the checkbox is being shown for the one that uh, evaluates to true. So now we can, and that's the recurring, we'll come back to that in a future session. This is the basic rule, um, PDF uh, base cost, you know, 30, print is 36, PDF and print 48, and a couple of other rules, um, one of which uh, subcondition. I'll have to check with Mary if we can just ignore this. So we're importing view here. I've got our sort of constants here for the base prices for PDF print, print PDF, low income, and flat rate, because all of those are essentially base costs for different people. And that was one of the things that um, was a minor epiphany. Just when we're developing software, a lot of times we're trying to organize things very conceptually, clearly, like having one concept, uh, one thing represent one concept and another, and map those back into user interfaces and such. Um, so after fiddling around a little bit, I realized that these, these flat rates were actually, in a way, base costs, because they, essentially, they, the base, these flat rate costs will override all of them. So it's a cost modifier. Um, and I could just include it in the same dictionary there. And this multiplier is uh, the only one that kind of stands out from the crowd because it's a coefficient instead of like more or less uh, an integer. But um, the only three of these are used against this coefficient. These ones are just out directly into the user interface, and we'll show you that. One of the cool things here, Vue lets you override the delimiters, the template delimiters, and uh, by default, Vue and Django use the same double curly braces, and uh, JavaScript has this um, string interpolation um, format, so I just kind of follow the convention of using dollar sign curly brace, so that anytime I'm in a Django template, Django has control using its double curly brace syntax, but if I'm using any kind of JavaScript stuff, this is a dictionary, but uh, for example, here we are, passing in data from view. I'm using the JavaScript sort of syntax. This, this is just my little convention, but it's just so uh, it's a reminder that we're essentially inter interpolating a, a JavaScript value from JavaScript into the template here. And it just so happens that we're dealing in dollar currency, so there's a little bit of double dollar sign there. But now we get down here. So in our data, there's not a lot of state data that needs to be tracked. We just need to, we have a format option for the first row, a cost option for the second row, and then this recurring option that we're not using yet, but it is being tracked and bound to the DOM. Uh, in order to do that, I've shown that a above, I think we use the V, I might have actually cleaned those up, the V model, let's see. I had a bunch of um, of these, basically I had like six of these at, for a minute there, and uh, in order to bind to a checkbox, you use this V model. But for these, we're just handling the, the on a click event, we're updating the property. So we have a, a computed function for each of the main formats, PDF, print, and print, and PDF. And essentially, they grab that 
base cost out of the, the appropriate base cost out of the dictionary. And they pass it into a second function that actually computes it. It's a conditional. That way, they can all share the same code. Now, I was uh, not sure that this was going to work. This other one's defined as a method. And I, di I didn't think that these would be reactive. Um, if something in the method changed, like the subscription cost, or low income flat rate became true, or international flat rate became true, I didn't think that the um, reactivity would propagate, but somehow in the design of view that works. So I was su pleasantly surprised by that. So essentially, we're getting the base cost out of each of the, out of that dictionary and pass it into this method, and we've got three main conditions that are mutually exclusive now. Uh, you know, basically it checks if it's low income and it'll return, if it is, it returns the flat rate. If it's international, it returns a flat rate. Otherwise, the true cost, it'll return the multi uh, base cost times the multiplier. Finally, it'll return the base cost. So fairly linear code, not, s not too much like spaghettiness. Um, I was pleasantly surprised again by this working out. Uh, but yeah, if there's any other suggestions for improvement, um, you know, I'm, I'm open to it. I'm learning Vue as I go, learning Django also. That's essentially it for this session. And again, we'll try to get to the recurring subscription part uh, in the next Hangout. And you'll see a little bit about the payment processing component as well. If you're watching these on YouTube, just stay tuned for the next video summary. All right, well, thank you for uh, all those who visited during the chat. Thanks, uh, Awkward Brian. Uh, for stopping by. Rich, Cyber Guy Rich, it's nice to see you. Dr. Enterfraid, good seeing you again. It's been, a, it's been a while. It's nice to have familiar faces and just people uh, to talk with uh, during the code session. We have some interesting conversations and I'm learning from y'all as well as hopefully you're learning a little bit by these recipes I'm able to show. If you're wanting to get involved with this or other similar projects, stop by codebuddies.org. Codebuddies is a really active community. There's people who are kind of co-learning all sorts of topics, JavaScript, Python, web you know, development, PHP, machine learning. CodeBuddies.org is also an open source project and they're it, uh, in the midst of a rewrite. So if you want to get involved with a, a great community and maybe get a little bit of experience contributing to open source, stop by CodeBuddies.org. Thanks a lot for your time. Have a great day or evening and hope you're staying well out there.